Hello, everyone. We will just uh, wait a few more minutes whilst people arrive. People could be stuck in traffic. Should probably have some sort of honed music while everyone turns up, shouldn't I? Morning, Steve. Just giving it a few minutes whilst people get in. You should be able to see my screen with an intro slide. If not, can someone just let me know in the chat, please? Okay, it's working. Ha, thank you, Billy. Still just wait a couple more minutes. In fact, I'll give it about 30 seconds. Right, hello everyone. Welcome to the West Coast webinar in association with HPE. How grand does that sound? My name is David Anthony. I'm West Coast's evangelist for all things that we class as technology solutions, which in reference to today means that I uh, deal with all the uh, training for our HPE technical and sales certification courses, which means that hopefully I'm ideally placed to be talking to you about today's agenda, which, as you well know, is centrally around nimble and really how to um, emphasize the, the benefits of going for a more value proposition for a storage array um, than uh, something like, uh, for example, we're going to use the contrast of uh, an HPE MSA storage array. Why would you go for a nimble um, when it's actually costing more than twice as much? What, what's the return on investment benefits? 
on there. But before we do that, I also want to um, quickly run over um, a, a couple of HPE innovations in the volume space of our business. So that's including flex offers, which isn't, as it may sound like, some sort of cut price gym membership. No, but it's, uh, it's around the transactional space and how to really um, improve uh, and smooth business flows around there. Um, this webinar, I anticipate, will take somewhere between about half an hour, 40 minutes, maybe 45 minutes, dependent on um, the number of questions we get and the amount of time I waffle on. Those of you that know me well will know I can waffle on, but I promised to be concise for today. So there is a Q&A box. Please um, put your answers in there as we go, and I will do my best to answer every question that comes along, comes in when it comes in. If there are any questions that I can't answer, we will be making a note of those and then finding the answers for you and sending out the answers to everybody. Okay, so if we're all sitting comfortably, and even if we're not, it's time to crack on. So I say the first thing I want to have a look at is uh, some innovations around uh, the transactional space. So um, more the uh, volume products, because much as we'd all want to be selling value items such as Nimble with the uh, greater margins and rebates, etc., that are associated with those, let's face it, our bread and butter of all our businesses is in that transactional space, the volume products. And for ourselves, and for the end users in that area, the challenges remain the same. They want to make sure that they're getting the right product that is going to solve their problem. They want to make sure that they get it at the best price and they want to get that pricing and product quickly. Okay, so how can we go about improving that? Well, certainly when it comes to product, HPE have come up with a series of these validated solutions. So this is workload led, so uh, application workload led. As we can see here, we've got a, a number of headings, file and backup, database, virtualization. So this is uh, a selection of products that have got the, the right levels of uh, CPU, memory, storage, and software uh, that would be bundled together to ensure that they are going to meet the customer's specific requirement. Okay. Not only that, but by having this in a, uh, a workload led offering, that means that it encourages you to, as opposed to just deal with it transactionally in the sense of a reactive to a customer's requirement, I want this, 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 and this, it actually encourages you then to be talking to the customer about the specific problems uh, that they are trying to overcome. So it opens up the whole discussion. But so what we've got here then is we can ensure that we're going to be having in more often cases than not the right product that is going to be right for the task that the customer needs. How do we find this? How do we manipulate this? We can do this through I quote. Okay. Now this gentleman doesn't look exactly very sure about this, but I think that's more to do with the tightness of his trousers than anything else. But as I say, we can access this through iQuote. And as we see here, it's talking about a solutions wizard. So we take it through from the workload and then breaking down the different requirements and then build up this solution, validated solution bundle of 
uh, products together, server, processor, memory, storage, software, etc. Okay. So that's the product side of it. What about the pricing side of it? Because we want to make sure that we've got the, the best pricing possible at in the, uh, the shortest amount of time to get that, that pricing back. Okay. So what we have for this is the new flex offers. Okay. Now, bundle pricing, because that's what this is in effect, but Traditionally, with bundle pricing, bundle pricing, all very good. Yep, you've got these products all, all together like that, and they're at the best possible price. You're not having to go off and get a deal reg or whatever. You've got the pricing. Excellent. But realistically, in the majority of cases, what the customer actually wants doesn't quite fit that bundle. You've got to make changes to it. And lo and behold, the pricing then goes skyrocketed up. So what's different with this? It's flexible bundle. So it's not just one element or one of each of those elements that you have to choose. There is flexibility in there so that you can create far more the bundle of your choice, far increasing the chances that that is gonna be matching exactly what the customer needs and providing that best price that can be got immediately. You tie that then in with the validated solutions. You've got the right product at the right price for the customer in the fastest possible time. Now, like I say, we can access through this. You can access this through iQuote or you can come through to your preferred HPE authorized distributor for live pricing. Preferred? Surely there's only one distributor. Are there any more? I can't believe it. There's got to be only West Coast, surely, but it's the only place we'll go. I'm confident of that. Anyway, moving swiftly on to the main topic of the day, which is nimble. Not sure how professional that is during a webinar to be drinking out of a large bottle, but um, hey, as long as the content's good, huh? Right, so now this is the technical overview of Nimble. Don't worry, for those of you that are of a less technical orientation, I'm gonna make sure absolutely, that take, think of it more as an overview of those uh, technical features that make nimble such a compelling proposition there's not going to be any jargon or anything like that i'm going to be explaining it to you nice simply and straightforward in layman's terms so that everybody can understand it but one of the in this illustration this picture here illustrates very much the one of the benefits of nimble the fact that it's ease of use, high performance and reliability, a lot of that comes about because of the built-in intelligence and automation. As can be seen here by this chap, even though he's got two racks worth of nimble, he's not having to be uh, worrying about those. He's sat there uh, on Facebook on his tablet quite happy. And as we can see, he doesn't have the trouble of too tight trousers because he's able to kneel down. Right, so Nimble. Now I did say that I'm gonna be comparing and contrasting with MSA. Okay, so here's uh, two bills of materials, one of MSA, one of uh, Nimble, both all flash arrays. And as we see here, we're talking double, more than double for the Nimble storage. So how do we justify that? Surely storage is storage, is it not? Well, this is what we're here to show that and to help you to be able to explain to your customers why Nimble Storage provides such a hell of a lot more and more that in the majority of cases, your customers are going to be wanting more of what your customers are going to be wanting. Okay, so... Nimble storage, as I'm sure you're aware, there's two varieties. We have an 
all flash and what is called an adaptive flash array, a hybrid array. So an array that combines um, SSD and hard disk drive. And this is the one that we are going to be very much focusing on. Now, I was saying about reliability. And with Nimble, you get six nines reliability. What is six nines reliability? That means that uh, on average, a Nimble storage array will be up and running 99.9999% of the time. Or on the flip side, the downtime is just one ten thousandth, ten thousandth of the time, which works out to be on average about 32 seconds a year that it is offline and not working. Okay, why is that so important? Reliability is essential because if we're talking about storage reliability, what's the application that this is running? This could be your organization's website that is using a database that is reliant on nimble storage to um, provide data for that database. And if that storage goes down, that database isn't available, your website isn't available. If your website isn't available, your customers will be probably looking to go elsewhere to get their quote, get their pricing, make their orders. So you've, as an organization, lost that opportunity. And if they've gone somewhere else, what makes us think they're going to be coming back anytime soon. So reliability has uh, an exponential effect on the cost that any downtime causes to a company. So to be able to have six nines reliability, we can already see one of the big advantages of Nimble anyway. So now, like I said, we're going to be concentrating very much on the hybrid array, the adaptive flash array, which as we see here, as opposed to the all flash, we've got all SSDs. With the hybrid array, we've got SSDs here, the rest are hard disk drives. Obviously this means it's cheaper. And the way that uh, Nimble is sorted and uh, the features within there actually means that in 90% of cases, the performance of the hybrid array is the same as an all flash array to the extent that it's only really if you're looking at a very heavily uh, right orientated um, applications that the all flash is where you would need to go but for the vast majority of use cases the hybrid flash is, is more than sufficient for reasons that I will explain. So um, looking into a bit more into the reliability and where we get those six nines reliability from, we've got dual power supplies. So in case one fails, another one takes over. We've also got dual controllers as well. Dual controllers, meaning that's where we've got our CPU, our processors for the storage array, and also the networking to be connecting out. So we've got one live, one on standby at any time. Okay, right. Now with this, we've got, this is the controller head shelf, and then we add extra expansion shelves, both flash and hard disk drive expansion shelves to this as we want to increase usage of the storage array. Okay, now we have a, a number of different uh, uh, varieties of the Nimble HF array. We've got the HF 20, 40, and 60. These other variants are, well, this doesn't have um, deduplication, it's just got compression and this is uh, half populated. Don't worry about these. What I would say is always concentrate, if you're selling to the customer, concentrate on these, the HF 20, 40 and 60. Okay, which as we see here, we increase a lot in terms of the amount of storage they can take, but also the performance. 
That's not to say that if your customer's requirements are growing, both in terms of quantity of storage and in terms of performance requirements, they and they start off with an HF20, they'd have to ditch that or, and or part exchange it to then buy an HF40. No, because all you actually need to do is exchange the controllers, giving us what is termed as a data in place upgrade. Anyway, so how does Nimble work so uh, efficiently, reliably, reliably, and with high performance? Okay, so I'm going to compare and contrast with the MSA. So where MSA and a lot of more standard, as I would term it, storage works is that a server, for that is what this is here, when a server is sending data to the storage array, we'll, in this case, we'll call it an MSA, what happens is the data it will send, the server will send data and it will need to wait for an acknowledgement from the storage array to say, okay, I've got that data and that data is safe before it can send any more. Now, for that to happen, that data has to go into the DRAM, the memory. It has to be um, then manipulated, deduplicated, compressed, and then sorted so that it can be put into the permanent persistent storage down here, the hard disk drives or the SSDs, before that acknowledgement can be sent. Because if the data is in here in the DRAM, that's non-persistent, meaning if power is lost to the storage array, the data that is in here is lost. So it's not safe to be sending any more yet until that data is down here in our persistent permanent storage. Okay, so with Nimble, this works slightly differently. First of all, it's because we have Within our controllers, we have these things called MVDIMs, non-volatile dual inline memory module. So it's an extra separate bit of RAM, separate RAM module, smaller amount, but that has also got on that module a piece of flash SSD permanent memory. And this is backed up by uh, a smart storage battery. What that means is that that bit of whatever data is on that RAM, if the power is lost to the storage array, the battery keeps that data live in that RAM long enough for it to be switched over to that small bit of flash storage on there. Okay, so the upshot being that when the server sends across data to the nimble array, the data is first of all put onto this NVDIM and then it is automatically copied over to the second controller also with another NVDIM. And remember, this is memory that is backed up by flash. So Instantly, that data is safe. We don't have to wait until it's gone into the RAM and is sorted and then put onto the persistent memory down here because we're already covered. We're covered if there was a power failure because we've got the memory there backed up by the flash and also we've got another copy of it. So if this entire controller failed, we've still got another copy, meaning the moment that that data reaches the controller, we can send back our acknowledgement and start the next amount of data being sent across. So MSA, it's got to go through here, down here, be sorted, go into here before then the acknowledgement can be sent. Nimble, the moment it hits here, boom, the acknowledgement comes in. So significantly faster in terms of performance when it comes to writing data to the array. Okay, so from then on, what happens? Okay, so now 
we see here we've got different block sizes. We've got different sizes of, of chunks of data because we're probably dealing with uh, that, that array is supporting uh, a number of different applications which have different um, sizes of blocks of data that is being written to it. Okay, so park that in your mind for a second. So the data goes into the MVDIM, then it's put into the DRAM. What happens there is we've got deduplication of and compression of data to make sure we're making it the most efficient as possible, much like on an MSA we would do there. But then neat thing happens because typically what we do with the MSA is we then put the data into the permanent storage. Now, because we've got different block sizes, it works a bit like um, a, a game of Tetris. Remember the game of Tetris where you've got all those different size and shaped blocks and you've got to try and get them all to connect in together nicely and neatly down here so that you can make a complete line and that line disappears. And as it starts building up and you make it more efficiently like that, but it's tricky because they're all different shapes and sizes. That's the problem that traditional standard storage has in being efficient with uh, the amount of space that is being taken up. Okay? It's a permanent game of Tetris going on. You've got gaps in there in space, so you're actually, it's not a very efficient way of doing it. With Nimble, it takes these variable block sizes of data and puts them all together into a sequential stripe. So it creates a block of, a bigger block of data, combines all those together to make a big block of data. On the hybrid array, it's an 18 megabyte stripe on the all flash array, it's a 10 megabyte stripe, but it's a consistent stripe of data. So consistent block of data means when it comes to sticking it into the storage, it's simplicity itself because it's Tetris where everything is the same shape. That's no game. There's no challenge there. It's easy because everyone can win at that because we've got maximum efficiency, no wasted space on our storage. So no wasted space in the storage means we're able to store more on the same quantity. We're already clawing some of that extra money that the nimble costs back over and above the extra performance when it comes to the rights that I was talking about. Okay, so now, Let's have a look at where the data goes. So with an MSA, the data is either gonna go on a hybrid array, it's either gonna go onto the hard disk drive, which makes up the majority, which is cheaper, or onto the SSD, which is faster. So when it comes to reading that data back, the server needs that data, it's gonna be requesting the data, that's reading the data, if it's on the SSD, that's faster to read. So you want your, your more commonly required data to be on the SSD. So the way it works is you can either pin certain applications so that they will automatically go to the SSD and everything else will go to the hard disk drive, or you've got different parameters. So um, you would uh, fill up from the SSD first, and then once the SSD is first, you start filling up your hard disk drive, or if it's in the hard disk drive and it keeps being requested, it will then move over to the SSD. But it's relatively clunky and you can get what would be called a cache miss, meaning the first time that data is requested, it's in here, not in here for the highest level of performance, right? So Nimble works differently. With Nimble, everything goes into the hard disk drive, everything. The most requested and required data, frequently required data, will also 
be copied into the flash area, the SSD. Isn't that a waste? It's not, because we've, as we've already seen, it's much more efficient on the nimble, much more efficient use of the data anyway. Okay? Storage available space. So all the data goes in here, then the most requested data will go into the SSD. How does that work? Well, just like with the MSA, you can also select, okay, for this application, I want it to go into the SSD, but this is where the intelligence is built in because we have built into it, we've got 22 patented algorithms, which are working out, having a look at the data that's coming in, the type of data, the type of application, and it is working out which data is going to be more likely to be requested than not. Okay, so there is far massively significantly less chance of this cache miss. So what I'm saying is that if it's going to be requested, the chances are it's going to be in the SSD. Okay, right. So let's have a quick look at the read operations. Okay, by the way, there is also in this bit, we take an index of where all the data is. Okay, so what happens is when we want the data, when the server needs some of that data back, it will send a message to the array. The array will first of all, have a look in the NVDIM is that data still in there? If it is, it will send it immediately back. If not, it'll have a look in the DRAM. Is it there? No? Okay. It will then have a look down here in the SSD. And it will see from the index exactly where that data is. Like I say, in almost all of the cases, it's going to be in the SSD if it's regularly requested data. Failing that, it will take it from the hard disk drive, but it's given an extra bit of impetus there because it's able to have a look in the index to see exactly where the data is. There's no searching around. So quick and efficient reading of the data. Okay. So, right. Now, further when it's, so we've got performance, further when it comes to reliability is the fact of uh, the RAID level. So with something like an MSA, you, you can choose the RAID level, RAID 1, RAID 0, RAID 5, RAID 6. The higher the number, the more costly it is because the more you're copying bits of uh, data around. With Nimble, it's just one level, which is triple parity RAID. What's triple parity RAID? It's RAID 6 with an extra bit of parity. RAID 6 has got two bits of parity. This has got three bits of parity. What? Surely that's that's going to be more costly then. If on something like an MSA, you can, for that um, data, you're not so worried about it, then you can have it at a lower RAID level, making it more cost efficient. But remember again, the efficient use of data in the Nimble array means that with Nimble, we can get away with having everything at the highest possible level of resilience. And this is what we have, triple parity RAID across the board. But that means it supports the loss of three disks. So three complete disks can be lost and no data loss at all. Okay. Right. Now, that is the device itself. A lot of people say, or I've heard a lot of people say, that um, the reason that HP bought Nimble in the first place is because of InfoSight, which we're going to be talking about in a sec. InfoSight is brilliant, but hopefully you've seen here that there's enough difference within the Nimble array itself to more than justify that extra cost over an MSA, dependent on the customer's use case. But for those of you that don't know, InfoSight is um, HPE's artificial 
intelligence back end for not just for nimble now but for across the board and i, I like to think of it um a bit like um uh, google maps for it infrastructure okay now what i mean by that is if we take um if we have a look at sat navs traditional sat nav is um you've got maps loaded into a sat nav and uh you put in where you want to go your destination and it gives you the route to your destination brilliant excellent so much better than using maps and whatever however once you do that and you're on your route if there is a traffic jam or a road closure or whatever you're stuck you get you come up to that and then you've got to reprogram it with an older traditional sat nav okay. something like google maps is different because it's not just reliant on the maps within the sat nav and reliant on the sat nav it is leveraging the experience of all google maps users so that all that data is sent up to Google, which then works on it using artificial intelligence to see patterns developing, creating rules from those patterns and recommendations from them. So it's able to say, right, on the route you were on, there is a traffic jam uh, five miles ahead. It's going to delay you by 15 minutes. Alternatively, if you go on this other route, um, you will only be delayed by seven minutes 38 seconds do you want to take this route okay that is in effect what we've got with infosight so as opposed to individual nimble arrays and individual users of nimble arrays having to just rely on their own uh experience all nimble arrays are connected to InfoSight, which is a cloud portal. So it's sent up to the InfoSight data centers, wherever they are. We're talking about information about the Nimble Array. We're not talking about customer data, we're on about data, uh, metadata, how the Nimble Array is being used. That is all sent up to um, InfoSight which user customer can log on to a portal and then see what is happening with your own array but because all nimble arrays are sending that data there we're able to then take all of that information and run artificial intelligence algorithms on it not just on current data but all historical data as well to be able to do some rather marvelous things so we can using infosight get it to tell us when based on our current usage when our um, capacity is going to be running out so we know ahead of time when we need to buy an extra expansion shelf or extra drives also it um, offsets a lot of problems upcoming roadblocks if we like so it will um it actually will deal with 80 percent of traditional support cases automatically it will open and close and automatically treat its own support cases so if it's a case of you would normally be updating to a certain um uh, firmware update level but uh other arrays have experienced difficulty by um, updating to that specific firmware level for that usage. InfoSight would give recommendations of, right, we're not going to update to this one. We're going to update to this other firmware update as well, avoiding that problem. Okay, So it does a lot of that automatically. And in fact, Nimble, we're able to get rid of um, first and second line support completely because 80% of the support cases were handled automatically by InfoSight. And then the other 20%, InfoSight was able to give 
recommendations on how to resolve the problem. So how does it able to do that? Well, one of the things is what it calls cross stack analytics, meaning that just from the nimble array, if you're running um, uh, VMware or Hyper-V workloads, the nimble array is able via InfoSight is able to see, or InfoSight is able to see across the virtualization software, the storage, the servers, and the networking to see if there is a problem where that problem is, which is massive. Because typically, if there's a problem, end users are pressing on the keyboard and nothing's happening, ringing up IT, this isn't working, that isn't working. The first thing IT's got to do is try to work out where the problem is. And you've got server teams and networking teams going, well, it's not us, it's you, it's not you, it's us. The first problem is finding where the issue is, then getting on to resolving it. InfoSight can see across that stack, server storage, networking, and virtualization, see where the problem is, and then give a recommendation of what to do to solve that. Further reason why we're talking about 6.9's reliability. Okay, so like I said, in comparison with traditional storage, say like the MSA, when it comes to performance, reliability, ease of use, hands off running, Nimble is just in a whole different league. In the majority of use cases, far more than justifying a double the cost because the savings that are made in terms of time and in terms of man hours can be enormous and also application performance. Okay, so here endeth the lecture, but what else can uh, West Coast provide you in order to help you with selling nimble and the volume products and in fact i've got something else for those of you that want to know more which i hope is all of you what more about nimble at the end i've got something uh, extra special to offer to you so do wait on for the next few minutes right now we've got a broad audience here today but for those of you that are with smaller um, organizations um, West Coast has a, a specific team to uh, look after you, our technology solutions focus team, which is more specifically around SMB. So, you know, that would be SMB size resellers, SMB size um, uh, end users as well, where not only are we giving you uh, dedicated response time, so two hours first response, meaning you put in a request, you know that someone is going to be talking to you about your request within a couple of hours. You may not have the answer and the pricing that you need straight away. It may be there's more needs to happen, but you're in a situation if you know that somebody is working on it and what they're doing to get back to you. Yeah, time is money after all. But also what the uh, focus team does is it, it takes um, or it, it streamlines you into working with HPE and HPE's processes. We are the conduit between you and HPE. Certainly if you're new to HPE and you don't know the way it works, you don't know the partner program, you're um, unfamiliar with the portals, we can guide you through all that. Plus end-to-end -end opportunity management. So making sure that you have the uh, any technical assistance that you need uh, when it comes to the opportunity, making sure that the right people within HPE are engaged with that opportunity. So HPE at westcoast.co.uk um, is how you contact the focus team there. But and for those of you who are in there will either know this team or will be have contact made very shortly to be able to uh, give you a, a full breakdown of exactly what um, they can offer to you to um, help you boost your, your journey into selling 
HPE. But as you develop on and for you uh, larger partners, there can and will be times that you are hitting a technology brick wall. So in terms of your um, uh, capabilities or availability of technical staff to uh, deal with certain areas, uh, be it the more advanced queries and questions around about Nimble, be it a, a larger opportunity that is going to be requiring um, uh, much more integration of products and just general larger opportunity understanding, you, all of you, can lean on our TSE team, TSE Technology Solutions Experts. And the, the main area we're talking about with this team is our solution architects, Dave Parks and Jack Dukarski, who deal with the HPE server storage and complete program and Aruba respectively. Dave Parks on server storage, Jack Tukarski on Aruba on networking. So these are guys who are specialist in this area and have been absolutely for years. Some of the, the highest qualified, best regarded in the channel. So again, if, if you're concerned that um, you're going into opportunities that you perhaps don't have the um, technological backup and support in-house, reach out to West Coast via your BDM or your account manager, West Coast account manager, and get engaged with the solution architects, Dave and Jack, and they will help you to close these opportunities. Okay, West Coast is the way. Right, now, just to finish, and I know I'm overrunning, we haven't had any questions and I've still managed to overrun. I told you I would probably waffle. Okay, so in fact, I told you I promised I wouldn't waffle, but hey, I lied. So Steve Danton has uh, asked me to let everybody know about NTS training. NTS training is excellent. So this is run by HPE. This is a full day's nimble training, virtual, obviously, COVID, there's a pandemic, don't you know? But it also includes hands-on labs. So not only do you get the technical training information about Nimble, but you're also able to have a play about with it as well on guided labs. So you can see how easy it is to create volumes, create backup uh, policies, etc. It's simplicity itself, but you're guided through and you're able to see that and you're able to do that in a guided fashion. So you can see, do you know what? That is easy to use. That just helps you even more when it comes to selling the product. This isn't a certification training. This is like a, a sales or technical tool. It's just getting you um, a hell of a lot more familiar with the product and understanding how, how good and how flexible it is. And like I say, you've actually had to play around with it yourself. Okay, maximum of two people per partner, numerous dates throughout the year that it is running. If you're at all interested in Nimble, and let's face it, if you weren't, you wouldn't be here. If you are here, which you are, clearly, you are interested in Nimble. Have a word again with your West Coast BDM, your West Coast account manager, and get yourselves signed up to the Nimble NTS training. NTS stands for Nimble Training something. I'm not sure, but NTS Nimble. Get on it and uh, you'll take your, your Nimble knowledge and understanding to the next level. Okay. That is me done. Do we have any questions? If there's no questions, that means one of two things. Either I've answered literally everything that you could possibly want to know, or you're all asleep. 
I'm going to work on the principle that it's the former. Aha. Can we get these slides, please? Yes, absolutely. Um, it will be um, it would be in a, a, a PDF form, but I will get the um, PDF over to you. The reason being why it's going to be in um, a PDF as opposed to PowerPoint is that the uh, slides um, themselves are part of um, uh, technical certification course. And if I, I let out the actual slides, um, I, I'd be shot by some people in America for doing that. But yes, we'll get the uh, PDF of this information out to you. Any more for any more? Okay, right. Well, thank you very much for um, your time in attending um, and um, any, hopefully I'll see you on future training sessions. Thank you. But please don't forget Nimble, NTS training, get yourself signed up for that. Utilize West Coast resources, uh, the your BDMs, your account managers and uh, our solution architects. Thank you very much indeed and see you next time.